Good morning, YouTube and all my beautiful subscribers and viewers. And if this is your first time, welcome. I'm Bonnie, Old Soul Mermaid. And today we're going to continue with a look at my deck collection. Today's video is going to include miscellaneous mass market decks. So these are from smaller publishers as far as tarot and or uh tarot uh if you see if you saw today i just posted one with my miscellaneous oracle deck so today we are looking at miscellaneous tarot decks so first on the list is the mystical dream tarot uh life guidance from the depths of our unconscious for janet uh i'm gonna butcher her name p p de lado p de lado and yeah i'm sorry <laughs> Beautiful box. This is by uh, published by Sterling Ethos, and it's a sleeve um, configuration. Beautiful, beautiful book. This book, I used this deck exhaustively when I first got it. Um, earlier part of last year, I believe. Um, full, lots of uh, information. And uh, you do get a depiction of the card, uh, black and white. It's a great book. It does have the two-part um, box, you know, compartments in the box, but uh, that's okay. It does have a nice insert so the, the cards don't go sliding around. As you can see, they're in there uh, very nice and tight. Those are the gorgeous backs. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I apologize if it's a little bit dark in here. It is an overcast, threatening rainy day here in Central Texas. These are glossy cards, regular tarot-sized cards. Uh, they are glossy, but they are not hard to shuffle. They have a pretty nice slip. This deck goes its own way. Um, if I remember correctly, these were from dreams from the creator. She created it from a lot of her dreams. It's one of those decks that does kind of go its own way. Yeah. But... Also, it does correspond, a lot of it does correspond with the RWS. It is beautiful. These images are gorgeous and dreamlike. I love the color palette of this deck. As you can see, nice cardstock. I mean, it is glossy, but there isn't a heavy, heavy shine to it. I think my deck was cut a little bit unevenly and I keep meaning to edge it, but yeah, it's not bad at all. And I love the mermaid and that it's included with the hangman. This deck may not appeal to everyone, but if you are looking to do some dream work, kind of delving more into the, un the unconscious, and also your shadow. This is a great deck. I think for shadow work, even though it does have some pastels, there's a lot of grays, um, neutral, toned down color palette. And I very much enjoyed working with this deck when I first got it. Very, very insightful. And I think it's a deck that doesn't get a lot of attention on YouTube. And as I'm looking at it right now, I'm just getting the urge to work with it again. A strong urge to work with it again. So I think I'm going to have to put that in a special, this deck in a special place so that I can do that for 2021. And that is the Mystical Dream Tarot. The next deck in my collection is the Osho Zen Tarot. Now, this is another deck. It's not traditional tarot. 
uh, I got this deck early in my tarot journey because I was watching a lot of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Lisa Pappas's channel and Katie Flowers, and they both um, raved about this deck. And I thought it was very interesting. And a deck that has a, no, a nothingness card really piqued my interest. This is the mass market version. I think that there's been different publications. I'm sorry, Simon is starting to bark again. He always tends to do that. Um, the card stock is uh, subpar, I would say. I don't think there's any real core. It's very papery, but I do love the backs. And like I said, this, this deck kind of goes a little bit its own way, kind of nods to the RWS. And then we have, you know, then it goes its own way. <laughs> I have not worked with this deck exhaustively because I have been trying to, to learn the RWS and because this kind of goes its own way and is its own thing, um, I haven't devoted a lot of attention to it. Uh, and I think in Katie Flowers, um, in her instance, that this was like her first tarot deck and maybe Lisa's as well, I'm not sure, but I think they cut their teeth in learning how to read with this deck, and then they went on to, you know, RWS and other things, so I'm, you know, I'm trying to master the RWS, and I do want to go into Marseille, that's a goal for this year, so I really haven't had the chance, I've, I've played with it a little bit, but I really can't tell you, I don't have any, I'm sorry, profound experiences with this. I'm very piqued and very curious, you know, with Osho. A controversial figure. So my curiosity is, is very much piqued. So that is the Osho Zen Tarot, the Transcendental Game of Zen deck. Next on the list is not a tarot deck. It's an oracle deck. I'm sorry, it's one oracle deck in here. I should have put it in my video that I posted today with my miscellaneous oracle mass market decks, but I missed it. It is the Druid Plant Oracle, and you'll see why I, I missed it because I meant to group it with another group of decks. But this is by Philip and Stephanie Carr Gom. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and illustrated by Will Worthington. This is also a sleeve configuration, and this is a newer, semi-newer deck to my collection. It's got this beautiful, beautiful guidebook with um, chock full of information. This is a plant deck that I want to delve into. And again, I have not had the chance trying to get up on my plants, um, trying to channel my mother who is now deceased a little bit because she was a plant expert. Um, if she wasn't conservative Mormon, you know, she, she naturally in her truest form was a kitchen witch. She was a cancer, highly intuitive cancer. I did not inherit her natural love for plants and working with plants and planting and gardening and working with herbs. Uh, my mother was is Mexican, was born and brought up in Mexico. Uh, grew up on a farm in rural Mexico for the earlier part of her life. So um, I love plants. I enjoy nature, but I'm not, I don't have a green thumb. Uh, I don't have that overwhelming desire to dig in the dirt, if you know what I mean. So I got this deck in a, a sort of in homage to to my mother. So that is the book. It does come with a sort of spread 
paper as they do. And these are truly, truly huge, huge cards that I don't think that you can work with. And those are the back, the backs. Um, <laughs> Alter cards, placements, maybe you pull a card of the, of the day, but uh, they, are, they are truly huge. Look at this. It covers my hand. Beautiful, beautiful illustrations by Will Worthington. Um, and I also got that because I enjoy his art so much. But the, the illustrations are so beautiful. And uh, I do want to get up on my plant knowledge, so therefore that's why I got the deck. And I'll just flip through a few of these because I have more to get to. Let me know if you have this deck and how you work with it. I don't, I haven't seen a lot of on this deck on, on YouTube. Haven't seen a lot of love for it, so let me know if you have this deck or have had it and how you work with it or have worked with it. And maybe, just maybe, this might be put on your wish list, huh? Let me know if you are enjoying the beautiful artwork. And that is the Druid Plant Oracle by Philip and Stephanie Cargom and illustrations by Will Worthington. So next is the Wildwood Tarot by Mark Ryan and John Matthews, again illustrated by Will Worthington. And that's why I missed the, the Oracle deck in my other video because I have um, two tarot decks with the illustrations by Will Worthington and I, I was thinking of grouping them together and lo and behold, yeah. <laughs> But this again has that wonderful, wonderful large book chocked full of uh, information. I've been very much wanting to learn to work with the Wheel of the Year. I have played around with this deck and I'm just like, whoa. It's, um, I am, as far as my spiritual practice, it is definitely going towards the pagan. I don't know if it's going to go straight to following the witch's path. I don't know. It may. Um, but as you can see, these are, I'm pulling out part of the deck because it's in this two piece box. This may be Sterling Ethos as well. They like to do the, the slide out boxes. But again, it's got all of these Will Worthington decks have the, kind of a green background. The cardstock is on the papery side, not super flimsy. It is matte. And there, for the fool, you have the wanderer, and instead of the magician, you have the shaman. So yeah, as far as my practice, uh, I'm very much trying to, you know, it's cliche to say, but find myself. If you don't know, if you are new to my channel, I grew up in a conservative Mormon background and stopped going to church in my 40s. I am now 53. It's been about 10, 11 years or so since I've been to church and decided to move away, but it has been a slow process. And I am looking for something to substitute. So I would say, you know, as many of us say, we're spiritual, but not necessarily religious. And I would definitely say that for myself. I need something, but organized religion is, not for me and it's taking me so long so long to start shedding those chains that bind and trying to get mormonism out of my psyche and trying to supplement it with something else that i know and so far has been suiting me better 
So that is the Wildwood Tarot with artwork by Will Worthington. One deck by Will Worthington that I have worked extensively with is the Druid Craft Tarot. I have this very large box set. I know that it has come before, you know, in just a smaller box, but I wanted the exhausted, exhausted book. And look how big, you need to get up a little bit higher just to see that. Yeah. It's, it's big and chock full of information. And I got this early on in my practice. As you can see, the, the book follows the same, uh, the same, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> the same pattern as the other books. You do get a black and white uh, depiction of the card. Lots and lots of information here. You do get spreads and the huge, huge cards. I worked a lot with this deck when I got it and it has been a long time since I've worked with it. Um, this has slightly different cardstock than I would say the Wildwood. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's it it seems to have a little bit more of a gloss, not quite as matte. But you see these almost they are quite large and they uh, take up most of my hand. If you have the regular boxed version, let me know. The one that comes, I think it's a two-piece box. Let me know uh, if the cards are more regular tarot size. That's the backs. This is a very, very large set. And this deck is well known to many. And it is a favorite of many. And I think, I don't know, I'm just flipping through this deck again. I'm thinking I need to work with it like all the Will Worthington art decks together in conjunction with the Lenormand deck that he has that has shown up in a couple of my other videos. And those are the beautiful cards. They've been renamed from, you know, the RWS, but it does follow that system, even with the renaming of some of the cards. And that is the Druid Craft Tarot. Next on the list is the True Heart Intuitive uh, Tarot by Rachel True. This is a newer release. I do have a full unboxing of this deck on my channel. And you can see all my opinions on it when it first came out, some of which have changed. One thing that has not changed, and I will tell you, is the box. Do not love the box will not lie, do not love the configuration, you know, the nestled in here. If you're gonna have the two part box, if you're gonna split a deck up, at least you can put like the other decks I've shown, the Will Worthington decks, put a tray that separates them a little bit. It's, you know, a chintzy box and it's not gonna hold up. Even, you know, if you're careful, it's just not. So I will have to make a bag for this, but you know, I like, if I'm going to have a big box deck with a big book, I like to keep everything together. That's just how I am. Uh, and also, not my favorite cardstock. On the flimsier side, doesn't seem to have a core at all. It's papery. But it's easy to shuffle, so. And they it does have gorgeous backs, though. Uh, this deck I described in my video, um, my unboxing as if the, what was it? If the Modern Witch and the Star Spinner Tarot had a baby. I love that it is diverse. There's not a lot of depiction of age in here. 
but it does have gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. Now, what I'll say is the real winner of this deck is the book. I love how Rachel True writes. I love how she's put her own experiences into the meanings of the cards. And in her writing, I, I, I'm enjoying the book very much. So I, I, I think I said in my unboxing video that I, the expression on the face, I said I didn't know if this was going to be a deck that would, is going to stay in my, my collection for long. I say I, right now I think it is going to stay for the long term. I'm finding that I was a little bit too hasty. And I'm glad I was, when I was doing my unboxing in, while I was going through it, I had it in the back of the mind, like, yeah, I think I'm going to trade or sell this deck, but I'm glad I held on to it and just started playing with the book and started reading the book because I stand corrected. I am so glad I have it, even though the... Yeah, the cards in the box have a lot to be desired, especially for the price point. I think they could have done a little bit better. But as far as content, as far as the art, it, it's beautiful. A plus on the book and the artwork. So that is the Intuitive Heart Tarot by Rachel True. The next deck to look at is the Antique Anatomy Tarot by Claire Goodchild. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know this is a favorite deck of mine. Though, when it first came out, and I do have an, um, I, do I have an unboxing of it? I, I must have, I can't remember, but I have complained. Maybe I, I can't remember if I have an unboxing of this deck. But, Beautiful, beautiful production. When the original deck came out, <clears throat> I've know I've mentioned it. It's I've talked about the cardstock of this deck. That it was very, very flimsy and papery. They have since upgraded the um, cardstock. It is now a much more chunky deck, though not super thick. It just, I think it has a, more of a core, it's matte. It's more along the lines of her new Arcana of Astrology uh, Oracle deck. If you have that, then you know. Now these are the beautiful distressed backs. Now I have a side-by-side -side comparison of the first printing of this deck and then this one with the upgraded card stock. I just go over any little differences there are and you can find that on my channel um, in my playlist, kind of side-by-side -side comparisons. I love this deck. I love Claire Goodchild's aesthetic. If this is your first time looking or discovering this deck, if you're new to tarot, let me know in the comments. Um, I have her Memento Mori Oracle. You know, I love that. Uh, I, I love her decks. I just love um, Claire's, just her essence. It just jives with, with mine and what I like, her tastes. It, this is not, this deck is truly not everybody's cup of tea but it certainly is mine. I love it. And I have actually three copies, two copies of the subpar cardstock and then this one with the better cardstock. And I think um, with one of those, with the subpar cardstock, I am going to do some, some mixed media projects with it. So stay tuned for that. So this is the Antique Anatomy Tarot by Claire Goodchild. Oh, before we put it away, I should give you a glance of the book, just in case you are brand new and you are not aware of this deck. Beautiful, beautiful guidebook. So you don't have to worry about 
um, purchasing this deck now. I think if you buy it at your local book retailer and if you purchase it from Amazon, it will be the upgraded cardstock. Thank goodness. Last on the list is the Everyday Tarot by Bridget Esselmont. I do not believe I have an unboxing of this tarot deck on my channel. Um, one thing I'm I like this little packaging. Look how compact this is. And this you could throw in your purse. The book is an easy little slip out book here. The one thing I don't like is this plastic top. It is, as you can see, I'm struggling to get it out. And you will continue to watch me struggle to get to open this up. It's not easy but I actually have two copies of this deck because it is so affordable it is so compact and look this little deck mass market deck matte gold edging I kind of like the limited color palette of this deck I think it's great for beginners if you're finding all the, it, it's stripped down with the, you know, esoteric, oh, there's the backs, the esoteric symbols and symbology, but you get everything you need. It follows the RWS closely. And if you find, if you're a beginner and you need a stripped down ver version, this is a wonderful deck. It truly is. It's compact. I think you can get it for nine or ten dollars. It is super affordable. Like I said, I got two. I ordered uh, one from Amazon and the other one I picked up at my local half price books. It was in perfect condition and it was four dollars. Can you believe that? So you get everything you need to learn tarot. If you don't jive or resonate with the traditional RWS, if you want something simpler, um, not a lot of stuff to, uh, you know, to distract you. If you just want to hone in on the card and the, and the primary symbology, this is a great little deck. The card stock is fantastic. And I'm speaking to you beginners, I can't recommend this deck enough for value, especially if you don't know if tarot is for you. This deck will give you everything you need in a very low price. And for you more advanced people, if for you readers, if you are into taking tarot on the go, you know, this is great. It is, you know, like playing card size, just about. Uh, the little book, you know, it is literally a teeny tiny book, but um, you get what you need. There's not pictures because you know it's a teeny tiny book but you get an upright reversed meaning and I'm, I can't remember if there's spreads in here I don't think there is I don't think there is no she just goes over the the cards but that's okay so Br Bridget Esselmont is Biddy Tarot she she has a website with lots of wonderful uh, learning materials, though you do have to pay for it. <laughs> but as far as this deck, she has a number, a few books that are very good. I have a couple of them. And she has, a she puts out a yearly tarot journal planner. And, uh, and this deck, this deck is so affordable. I can't rave about it enough. So those were my miscellaneous mass market tarot decks with the one Oracle included because, you know, I missed it. So let me know what you think. Do you have these decks? Are they currently in your collection? Did you have them at one time? How do you work with them? I'm especially curious with the Druid plant 
oracle that I had in here. I'm really curious to know if you've worked with it, if you had it, if you were even aware of it, of its existence. And um, I always love to hear from you. I appreciate your comments and the time that you spend with me. And uh, I will be back with another look at my collection. My goal is to get all these videos out, you know, by New Year's uh, Day. Maybe that being my last one that I post in my collection. I'm still good. I have one with one more with my mass market decks. And then there's going to be two long ones just looking at my, my indie oracles and then my indie tarot. So yeah, get ready for those. <laughs> They'll be long. So, okay. Thank you for watching. And I hope you are having a wonderful day. Bye for now.